Hello, my name is Kiana Gutierrez, and in this video titled By Candlelight, we'll be looking at Joseph Wright of Derby's use of extreme chiaroscuro in two different works. Unlike most artists, Joseph Wright of Derby was not limited to one type of genre in his paintings. He made artworks with differing subjects from portraits to landscapes, demonstrating a high level of mastery in all of his pieces. In this video, I'll be focusing on one of his most famous paintings, a philosopher lecturing on the orrery made circa 1763 to 1765, as well as his other artwork, Two Girls Dressing a Kitten by Candlelight, made around 1768. Before we jump in on analyzing the paintings, I'll refresh our memories on the definition of chiaroscuro. The Italian term translating to light dark is defined by Gardner's Art for the Ages in drawing and painting as the treatment and use of light and dark, especially the gradations of light that produce the effect of modeling. This is a technique used in the art world to help render a two-dimensional composition into a more naturalistic and three-dimensional looking piece. This technique was made popular by masters like Caravaggio. First, we'll take a closer look at a philosopher lecturing on the orrery. In this dark scene, we see both children and adults marveling at an orrery while a philosopher teaches them. According to an essay by Abram Fox on this artwork, an orrery is a mechanical model of the solar system, a miniature clockwork planetarium. Each planet, with its moons, is a sphere attached to a swing arm which allows it to rotate around the sun when cranked by hand. It simulates orbits as well as relative distance relationships of the planets. In this composition, Joseph Fred of Derby places the light source in the center where the sun would be inside of it, illuminating the scene. The child closest to the viewers is facing the orrery, causing only his or her silhouette to show an obscure part of the orrery. Since the only light source comes and illuminates from within, the composition feels weighty due to the overall darkness and harsh shadows. In the background, a curtain covers part of a bookshelf. With oil paint, Wright was able to capture and render beautiful detailing in the folds of their clothing as well as highlights and shadows in their hair. His mastery of modeling brings such a naturalistic three-dimensionality to the scene. Although the scene is primarily dark due to fading into the shadows, Wright used pops of colors to keep the composition from getting doled out. For example, the vibrant red in the philosopher's coat and the pinstriped orange and yellow vest of the note-taker make the piece more lively and interesting. Historically, chiaroscuro was used in many religious paintings to add drama and awe to a scene. The Age of Enlightenment was upon Wright's time, however, as many curious minds shifted from religion and studied science. Abram Fox believes there's a connection between Wright's use of chiaroscuro and the scientific subject matter as opposed to conventional religious subjects. In comparing Wright's piece with other religious paintings depicting conversions, Fox stated, the figures listening to the philosopher's lecture in Wright's painting are experiencing conversion to science. He also went on to say, the gas lamp replacing the sun illuminates the scene, allowing the viewer to clearly see the figures within, and it symbolizes the act of enlightenment in which those figures are participating. In the British Art Journal Volume 2, Amalas Four and Paul Williamson argue that, quote, the philosophical enlightenment conveyed by the orrery is both invoked and qualified in a composition that shows a symbolic lamplight contextualized by an equally symbolic darkness. They believe that as the figures contemplate the vast, timeless operations of the universe, there is an implied sense of human mortality, or in a more philosophical and general sense, it symbolizes the transience of life. Next, we'll discuss Two Girls Dressing a Kitten by Candlelight. According to Caroline Cole, the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston, this oil painting is considered a fancy picture, a term coined in the late 18th century for paintings that were neither portraits nor historical or literary subjects. The subject of this painting is two young girls playing dress-up with their kitten. The kitten is held up atop a table next to their doll, which has been cast aside. The girl closest to the viewers looks back directly, smiling in prideful mischief. Beautiful details in the texture of her satin dress and pearls give more naturalism to the painting. The other girl, perhaps the sister or playmate of the girl in the foreground, is on the opposite side of the table. She smiles as she holds up and dresses the kitten. 
To help offset the overpowering darkness, the girls' dresses are light, feminine, and almost in the pastel range. Like the previous artwork, the light source is in the center of the piece. In this case, it's a candle on the table. As with the girl in the foreground, the kitten makes direct eye contact with the viewer, but it is emotionless and stares blankly, which makes it a little unsettling. Julius Bryant suggested that this scene may not be as innocent as it seems at first glance. He believed that it, quote, belongs to an artistic tradition of allegories on the cruelty of children and of images of young girls as irresistible charmers and victims. Others suggest Wright may have been influenced by other artworks by contemporaries featuring young children with felines, warning children from playing with kittens as a proverb with deeper meaning. Whatever the deeper meaning, this quirky depiction of children playing with the kitten is fun. Wright of Derby's attention to detail in creating texture for the kitten's fur and the lace trim of the yellow dress is uncanny and awe-inspiring. In conclusion, we can see that Wright's mastery of extreme chiaroscuro extends beyond just showcasing his abilities. As Ronnie Lippin stated in the eighth volume of the Law and Humanities Academic Journal, it is important to note that the productive light in Wright's paintings always occupies the center. Out of the sheer chaos of nature, out of the utter miasma of earthy desire, Wright's light, following Locke and Hume, produces focus and centered stability and order. Joseph Wright of Derby was able to master chiaroscuro and use it to illuminate new ideas and present them artistically in ways they hadn't been before. We look back and appreciate the legacy he left behind as we continue to study him and his works. Thankfully, we don't have to do it by candlelight anymore.